Hey everybody. So you may or may not know that I have a Motobicon um, HAL Boost 2020. Um, I got it about six, seven months ago and I love it. It's a great bike. Anyways, so um, my daughter and son-in-law got new bikes and I was pleased with Motobicon and the value so they bought from Motobicon. This is the bike that they got. It is the Taz 3 Comp, the TAZ 3 Comp. It took a while to get it, took about, I think it was like six weeks, eight weeks to get it because of shipping and stuff like that. Um, this is a hardtail plus size tire bike. So um, 29ers, three inch rubber. This is the small size. It's a 15.5 inch for my daughter who is uh, about 5'4". So it's kind of, she's right on the, the verge of that, but I think she's gonna be good based on um, inseam leg length. Color is stealth gray, super dark. So let's unbox this thing and uh, see what the first impressions are of how it looks coming out of the box. I got one of these for my uh, son-in-law as well. Hardtail as well. Um, they're not, they don't ride a lot, so I didn't want them to have to deal with the maintenance and some of the stuff that comes with uh, full suspension. These have a Manitou Machete front fork, 120 millimeters of travel. So I'm thinking these should be pretty good low maintenance bikes for them. And if they get more into it and they start riding more and more, you know, they can always down the road. Get a full suspension. My hope is, and they're young too, so they're both in their 20s, so they should have some spring in their legs, I think. are sick. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. It's a one by 12 drive chain. Look at the size of these things. Maxxis Minion DHR2. three inch tires. I don't have a bike stand, which kind of sucks. I should get one. So far, I'm digging the paint job. So one thing I was really happy with on my uh, Motobicon, oh, by the way, welcome to my wood shop. Um, what I was really happy with with my Motobicon was the uh, weld quality. You know, I was expecting the welds to be, well, chunky. And on my bike, maybe they used filler or something, but the welds are smooth. I mean, people even ask me if it's carbon because you can't hardly see the welds. So I'm curious to see on this one. what the welds look like. They're beautiful too. Not quite as smooth as on mine, but really well done. I mean, clean. Nice. There's the seat post. KS dropper post. The problem I have with my KS is there's this nut right here that kind of stabilizing this has got to go by the way this little nut 
it loosens up on bumpy terrain. And so I end up having to always tighten it or I'll actually wrap black tape around it to kind of keep it from loosening. I thought about using Loctite on it, but I don't know if I want to do that. This thing has a one by 12 with a 30 tooth chain ring. The climbing gearing on this is gonna be insane. So they give you these little metal clips that connect. They're kind of like lock washers and they connect the, the screw heads, the screws. I'm not exactly sure how they work, but they're supposed to help with them not coming undone. And they look like this. And it has a little decal on it that says top. So you want top obviously on top. The, the uh, rotors are screwed on with a T25 star bit. So you think you got all the Allen wrenches and then they throw T25 star bit at you here now and then, or sometimes even T15, depending on different things. So I got a lot of questions on my other bike about measurements. You know, are they true? to what they're said. So on this one, I'll do the same. I'll, I'll throw the measurements on in this video. So then you can compare those measurements. To what the website says they measure out at. The other thing I found is, um, you know, it's a um, one by 12 drivetrain, takes a little tuning. Um, I'm not real good at tuning derailers, so that might be something you take it to a shop for. The other thing is uh, bleeding the brakes. I found my bike needed to have the, the brakes bled. So what I was saying was I found uh, that the brakes, the way they come, sometimes they, they might need to be bled. Mine definitely did, and I took them to a shop and had them bleed it, and I still kind of wasn't happy with it. So then I took, there's probably a Newton meters for this, but I don't know what it is. Um, so then I took my, uh, I took and bought a bleed kit online for my brakes. Did it myself. Just watched a YouTube video on it. And they work tons better. So I think it's worth it to spend 30 bucks and get yourself a bleed kit for your brakes if they're hydraulic. And then learn how to bleed your own brakes. So once again, this is a T25 star bit. That falls out. I don't know how hard to pull these, but I could probably crank them really hard. I don't want to do that, so I'm just cranking them hard enough to where I think they're not going to come undone. All right, so there's one. 
Back tire. That is a tire and a half, man. So, kind of one of the things I think about with a bike company like this is their whole thing is they sell a budget, high quality bike. And if you want to sell budget, If your stick is, I sell budget high quality bikes, but your bikes are crap, real quick, you're gonna get a reputation for selling crap bikes at a cheap price. And I've done a lot of research and searching and, and reading reviews on Moto Batons, and the problems that people have are minor ones. You know, sometimes suspension componentry loosens up, but it's fixed by some Loctite. Um, I mean, you just don't hear, and they sell a lot of bikes, and you don't hear about frames breaking or people being unhappy with the bike's performance. So, you know, there are aspects of the bikes that are not, you know, state-of-the-art geometry, let's say, or copyrighted, patented, whatever, suspension designs, you know, no DW link or whatever, but overall, they perform really well. And they continue to perform, and they sell the same bikes over and over and over again. They don't, they update, they seem to update um, components, but the bikes themselves stay pretty much the same year after year. So I think it's pretty cool. I think what they've done is really came up with a good all-around design. and make a million bazillion of them. It's not the greatest design, but it's a really good design. You're not gonna see an enduro racer or a downhill or a cross country pro riding a Moto Bicon. But, I see them and hear about them more and more out in the desert. People riding them. Even met a guy at the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival that bought his whole family motor pecans, but he didn't bring them because he had to travel so far. Um, so they rented or were demoing Canyon Stripes. That's a pretty high end bike. I think they were eight or 9.0s. And his comment to me was, he wouldn't spend the five grand, the $4,500 after riding it. 
His opinion was his modal baton would perform just as well. I believe it's a six millimeter Allen wrench. And it unscrews from this side. And pulls out on that side, pretty cool. So here's my final thoughts on this bike. Um, the tires, now remember this is a small frame. So the tires may have been better suited spec'd as 27.5, 3s or 2.8s for the small frame. They seem a little overwhelming for this frame, however, on a large or an extra large, I don't think it would be any problem whatsoever. Um, I think the head angle could be a little more slack and it wouldn't have hurt anything. It's 68.5 and I looked up some other bikes and it seems like for trail bikes pretty commonly it's 67 to 68. So I mean it, it wouldn't have hurt them to just slack that out just a touch more to give you a, a little better control on the downhills and descents and stuff. Um, the 1x12 drivetrain is an SX, so that's kind of on the low end of the 1x12s, but it is a 1x12 and it is SRAM, so it's got basically the same build for the price point. I think it's good. The tires are specced beautifully as far as the grade, the quality of the actual tire. The brakes are hydraulic. I think they're like M200 or something like that. Um, nothing over the top, but then again, this is not considered a high-end bike. So they stop really well, um, especially with these size tires. I have not ridden it on the trail. Um, it's actually my daughter's bike. So I'll have to see uh, what she thinks. I also, my son-in-law got one in the extra large, which we have not assembled yet. We'll see what he says when it comes to stopping these big old rollers here. Um, but that's it. I mean the fit and finish is great. I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see the weld quality It looks really good um, There's a few little spots where I think you know, they could have maybe done things a little differently like this kind of a little Jimmy rigged here but uh, I Love this machete. It feels decent It's got a progressive lock here so you can have it um, full open or progressively make it stiffer until it's basically locked out. Um, the KS dropper post, the problem I have with mine is that this nut here loosens up. However, that's fixable. Um, that's it. If you're interested in this bike, you should have a pretty good overview of it at this point. Uh, the geometry on it is pretty good. Not quite up to snuff with some of your 2020 um you know big name brands but very close um very uh very well equipped for the price point definitely gonna need to get some better pedals they skimp there that's for sure